Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about pedestals and we're also going to talk about cultural or peer pressure. So we're going to dive into the book of Acts. So grab your Bible, grab your journal, grab a pen, get ready to go, get those fingers ready to write a little bit as we grow together in the Lord. While you're grabbing that all that stuff, I want to welcome everyone, those of you who are joining us for the first time. We're so glad to have you. My name is Ruth Hendrickson, and I run RHM International, and you can find out all about it by visiting the website, ruthhendrickson.com. All right, here we go. Let's dive in. First question, who do you place on pedestals? Okay, who do you place a place on a pedestal? And let me give a, a, a sub-question with that, which is why. Okay, who do you place on pedestals, and why have you placed them on a pedestal? Why do you admire them? And I think that's another good way to ask the question because we can admire people and that's absolutely fine. We can see the gifts, the talents, the skill set um, that God's given them. We can see the integrity that they walk in, all of that. But then there's a secondary question like, have we put them on a pedestal? Great question to ask with Holy Spirit. Remember, as we look at these things, we always process with Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit reveals the deep and inner things that we may not see or we might justify on the surface. So. Who do you place on a pedestal? Who do you admire? What do you admire about them? Um, the other the other question under that would be if you've placed somebody on a pedestal, what impact does that have on them? Okay, that's another question. It, you know, I've placed so and so on a pedestal. So what is the impact that that has on them? And then the next question is if I've placed somebody on a pedestal, what impact does it have on me? And then the final thing we're going to get to is what are the dangers of cultural pressure or peer pressure? And how can that take us down the wrong road, especially if we put somebody on a pedestal? And so we're going to go into the book of Acts and we're going to go to chapter 14. We're basically going to do verses 8 through 19. So it's a longer passage, but I want us to hear the whole thing. So in Lystra, there sat a man crippled in his feet who had never walked and was lame from birth. He heard Paul speaking, who looked intently at him and perceived that he had faith to be healed. And he said with a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And he jumped up and walked. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Laconian, the gods had come down to us in the likeness of men. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the main speaker. The priest of Zeus, who was in the front of the city, brought bulls and garlands to the gates to offer sacrifices with the crowds. But, just say but, but with the apostles, Barnabas and Paul heard this. They tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, crying out, men, why are you doing this? We also are men of like nature with you, preaching to you to turn from these vain things to the living God, who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything that is in them, who in times past allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Yet, just say yet, yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying our hearts with food and gladness. And with these words, they scarcely restrain the crowds from sacrificing to them. Okay, let's stop right there. Number one, um, let me just make a side note here. Um, with physical healing, there's been a lot of um, uh, theology that comes just from this, where people have been told that they're not healed because they don't have the faith. Please don't do that. That's a whole nother teaching. There's many reasons that people are not healed and we don't fully understand all of them. But also I wanna say never back off from praying for healing because we're commanded to pray for healing and we serve a God who heals. But please never put shame on anyone um, because you know, the healing didn't happen. And please don't ever say anyone to somebody, well, you just didn't have enough faith and that's why you aren't healed. That actually puts shame and condemnation on them rather than leading them into, into uh, hope in God and life in God and, and you know, growing closer to him. So, all right. So just, I wanted to put that little caveat in there um, just because of the language that's used here in the modern English transversion, uh, 
modern English version of the Bible, the translation, which is what I read this out of. So, all right, let's go back. Um, these people, the crowds, okay, they witnessed a miracle. Just say that they witnessed a miracle. They saw what Paul had done. They would have, you know, the Paul was speaking. He looked intently at that man. Some of the people probably, probably caught that gaze and others did not. But you see, he says in a loud voice, this was not whispered in this man's ear. He says in a loud voice, he wasn't even necessarily standing close by. Okay, he said in a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. Okay, so when somebody speaks in a loud voice and there's a crowd around, it draws attention, right? So even that drew the people's attention to what was happening. And they would have seen this man not struggle to his feet. Scripture says that he jumped up. Okay, he jumped up. Just say that he jumped up. It was a sudden response to a command given by the man of God. Okay, so this man jumped up and he walked. It doesn't say he crawled first. It doesn't say he stumbled along. The picture I actually get when I read this is that he literally jumped up and walked with a confidence walked with a purpose, walked with joy, walked with a, a spring in his step. Not that he stumbled, you know, you think of how a kid learns to walk, you know, first they crawl and then they start to pull themselves up and then they take a step or two steps. They falter, they fall down, they go boom, they get back up. No, what I see is this man jumped up and was fully able to walk, even though he had never walked in his life. Like that's the type of miracle that we see happening right here. And remember the crowds gathered around, they would have known this man crippled in his feet, had never walked, was lame from birth. We don't know his age, but we can take into account from the wording here, he was an adult and this has been his whole life and all the people would have known it. And yet here's Paul looking at him and saying with a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. So what happened is immediately when the people see this, of course, there's great joy and there's great awe, of course. Okay, but what they do is they not only put Paul and Barnabas up on a pedestal, but they're so high up that they give them God status. They were going by their cultural understanding. Okay, so they immediately put them up on this pedestal so high up that they gave them God status. They weren't just good men. They took them right out of the human race category and put them in the category of their gods. So one point I want to say is whenever we have put somebody on a pedestal, we stop looking at where the power comes from and ascribe to them something that is not theirs to carry. Whenever we put somebody on a pedestal, we actually set them up for a fall because they're human and human beings are not perfect. So we, we set them up for a fall. And that's why I said, take a look at who you have set on pedestals. One of the things that we've seen happening a lot within the body of Christ is we've seen a lot of these, these um, our pastors, our leaders, our apostolic leaders, men and women of God, who people have put on pedestals and then they've fallen. I mean, we, we've had a lot of Christian leaders have moral failures, okay, but no matter what, they're not perfect, okay, no matter, even without the moral failure, they're not perfect, but what's happened is with some of these big names that have had failures, what we've had is people walk away from the body of Christ because they put the individual up on a pedestal. Now, is the individual responsible for their decision to sin? Absolutely, we're not saying that they're not. But when we start looking at the individual and start following the individual, rather than following the Lord, we've actually set them up for failure. We've actually set ourselves up for failure. I'm a preacher's kid. And one of the things that my parents ingrained in me, ingrained in me, is not to follow the, the man or woman of God, but to follow God. I mean, that, that was ingrained in me all the time. You know, and so I really appreciate that because it, it gave me such a balanced viewpoint as I became an adult, as I've walked in ministry, as I've, as I've um, watched people fall, make bad choices, or even looked at them and, and they're still in their position, but I see these questionable integrity things. And 
because I learned so early, it was drilled into my head, don't put them on a pedestal, don't put them on the pedestal. It hasn't had the impact, but yet I see others who of course have put them on a pedestal because they're a leader, they respect them, whatever, you know, led them to the Lord, all these wonderful things that they did. And then the leader falls. And because they were up on that pedestal, the person takes a hit too. And what happens often is then they walk away from the body of Christ, but you never walk away from the body of Christ because somebody fell, including a leader. You might need to switch the group that you're worshiping with. You, you probably need to work through some things, some forgiveness issues and releasing them, but it should never pull you away from the Lord because if we're not putting people on a pedestal, if the only one we're actually looking up to with that with that um you know the only one who's never going to fall off a pedestal is god okay just saying let's let's just that some of you guys might be saying that's a little bit of heresy but you know he is the one that we look up to he is the one who always makes the right decision and where we get into trouble with that one is when his decisions don't always align with our decisions and then we get upset with him right okay so um anyways the other thing is when people put us on a pedestal, think about this. Have you ever been put on a pedestal? How does it make you feel? There's a number of ways for some people. It makes you feel really uncomfortable because you know where that strength comes, where that power comes from. Like, you know that it's only possible through the Lord. But other people, when you get put on a pedestal, it actually could be an open door to pride coming in. Because when people begin to really you know, speak to you in that tone or honor you from that place, it, it can become, um, it, it's an interesting walk because on one hand, we need to hear the encouragement and we need to hear the well done. God does bring people around us to encourage us. But if you get that funny feeling like you're being put up on a pedestal or you feel like pride's coming in, be very, very, very careful of that. Okay, because it will quickly set us up for failure anyways. You know, one of the things I wrote um, as I was putting this together um, I put, when people put us on a pedestal, it has the potential to feed our pride and draw our focus away from God. And of course, their focus away from God. God calls us to rejoice over what he is doing in and through us and to recognize how he is using us. However, we cannot allow the glory to fall on us. We must be like a mirror reflecting the glory back to him. And that's really what Paul and, and Barnabas did. First, of course, they were horrified that the people wanted to offer sacrifices to them. They immediately took action and began to remind them that they were just humans like them. And they began to point to God. In other words, they began to witness, you know, it goes on and, and, um, you know, we're, we're men of a nature like you preaching to you to turn from these vain things to the living God who made the heaven and the earth and the seas and everything that's in them who in times past allowed the nations to walk in their own ways, but he did not leave himself without witness for he did good and gave us rain from heaven. So that's verses 15, 16, and 17. Okay. Where they're shifting their attention. They're saying, Oh no, don't sacrifice to us. The other thing that I want to point out when we talk about um, this is that there was a, even a leader, you know, the, the, um, you know, the, the uh, priest of, of uh, who was it? Zeus's temple. He went, yeah. The priest of Zeus brought the, he's the one, the leader of the temple of Zeus brought the bulls and the garlands to the gates to offer the sacrifices with the crowds. In other words, their religious leader, yes, it was a, it was false, but it was a religious leader in the city, recognized in the city, was the one who was saying, oh yes, these men are gods. I'm bringing the, the sacrifice so that we could sacrifice to them together. It's so important. I want to bring that up because so often I say we have to, even what our leaders say, we test it back to the word of God so that we don't get led astray. Okay, so so we need to be able, we need to know that we're testing, that we're going so that if our leaders veer off track, they're human just like us, that we stay on track because for ourselves, we're diving into the word of God. We know the word of God. We know when something's off. Okay, so that's very important that we recognize what our leaders carry, but we also have the Holy Spirit within us. We have a living God. We have a God who loves to speak to us, and we have a God who gave us his word. He gave us his word to keep us on track. And so we have a responsibility. You know, if, 
if our if the leaders just to use this example here in acts if the leader comes and says well we're going to sacrifice here to this god that we say no because that's not our god okay that's not the god that's not the god of the universe that's that's a little g god that's not a capital g god and i will have no other god before me i will have no idol i will not step off that and and paul and barnabas were so careful to come back to this place and say oh no don't worship us don't put us up on a pedestal don't consider us as gods you're looking at the wrong source you're looking at the wrong power let us tell you who healed this man who you'd known for years let us tell you the power that went into this man the healing power where it's from that enabled him to jump up and to walk. Let us tell you where you need to focus. And so what were they doing? They were witnessing and they were giving credit where credit was due. They weren't downplaying themselves, but they were making sure that they were not put on a pedestal. They were making sure that, um, that the people were looking in the right direction. In fact, the people's response really grieved them. That, that renting or tearing of clothes is a sign of great anguish or great grief. And they tore their clothes with what the people were doing. It's like, you know, and the culture would have understood that as something was wrong. Okay. And, and so they went and speak into this. And it's a very important that when we see things going off track like that, that we speak up, that, that our, our mouths are not taped shut, but we speak up and we give glory where glory is due. Okay. We give credit where credit's due. In other words, we reflect back, right back into the heavens, right back to God. The other thing I wanted to mention about is peer pressure. Because remember, this crowd had just seen this crippled man healed. Okay. They had just seen him jump up and they had seen him healed. And they had heard what Paul and Barnabas said. They had heard them say, don't sacrifice to us. They had just barely stopped the sacrificing. And it goes immediately into verse 19 and it says, then some Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there and persuaded the crowds and they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city. They basically assumed he was dead. So they had to get the body out of the city after they stoned him. Ouch. Oh my gosh. They had just seen, look how fast this, how fast it flips from seeing a man healed, from raising Paul up, especially, I mean, both him and Barnabas, but giving them names of their little G gods and trying to worship them and offer sacrifices and that being stopped. But yet they had seen something. And yet you have these Jews come into town and they persuade the crowd with such, such, um, such strength that they go out, and they stone Paul and drag him out the side of the city thinking that he's dead. How ridiculous is that? Here's the thing. When we cease to think for ourselves, we will be easily swayed by the culture around us, by, the, by our peers around us, both cultural pressure to conform, peer pressure to conform will lead us down a road that we never would have gone down otherwise. And I just looked at this and I look at everything going on today with all the confirmation and with all the, um, oh, you're free to think as long as you think like the culture, you know. Um, you're not allowed to speak up and we're going to cancel culture you. We're going to, you know, go and demean you. We're going to, you know, we're, we're going to do everything you, we can to tear you down. And many are people who have followed the Lord who are doing things like this because like this, they, you know, like the crowd here, they get so easily swayed. We have a responsibility to guard our belief system, to guard the things of God to stay grounded on the word of God. And that all involves this whole realm of not putting people up on pedestals, not allowing ourselves to be put up on a pedestal, not entering into agreement with that, recognizing who God is, recognizing how God uses us, what his heartbeat is, and also having the strength and the courage not to conform to cultural pressures that go against the word of God. Okay, that's all there is to it. Like I said, this, this group, yeah, they weren't, you know, they weren't following Jesus. We get that, you know, it, this, this city um, had a lot of idolatry going into it. They had a lot of false gods, but you see how easily they are turned. And I just really looked at that and I was thinking, wow, how easily we could be persuaded 
to do something that we would never do otherwise. So with that said, I know I need to wrap this up, but take a look at those questions. Um, who do I place on pedestals? Why have I put placed them on a pedestal? What impact does this have on the individual? What impact does it have on me? And then the final question is where have I caved into cultural or peer pressure that goes against the word, the heartbeat of God, the nature of heaven, who God's called us to be? Where is it actually nullifying my witness? And so take that and spend some time with the Lord and get back on the right track. If he shows you something, get back on the right track. We are in a season where the Lord is asking his people if we're going to speak up, if we're going to stand on the word of God, if we're going to model him, which means are we going to go out and heal the, the blind and what the deaf will hear and the lame will jump up and walk no matter what it costs us. And at the same time, are we going to keep pointing the world to Jesus Christ? And through all of that, as, cultural, as culturally we're moving further and further and further away from the word of God, what's our stance going to be, no matter what, what it costs us? This stance right here, I mean, we just kind of read the words on the page that, um, you know, that, you know, we just read the words on the page that Paul was stoned. Just think for a moment of what his body physically felt. He survived it. The bleeder, believers went out, found him, stood around him. He, he survived, but his physical body felt those stones hit. His physical body had the scrapes of being dragged outside the city. What are we willing to risk so that we don't conform not only do we not get put on a pedestal, not only do we not put others on a pedestal because we're all human beings made in the image of God, but what are we willing to risk in order to bring heaven to earth? What are we willing to risk in order not to conform to the cultural pressures around us? So, all right, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, um, we just ask for your revelation we ask for your light to shine in. And Father, anywhere one that we've put on a pedestal, Father, would you, we just ask you to show us. And Lord, we want to take them off that pedestal. We want to see them made in the image of God, made in your image, full of the gifts and the graces and everything that you have placed within them. We want to cheer them on in their race. And Father, if, if when they falter, Lord, we want, to, we want to stay strong and we want to be somebody who can help bring them back. So, Father, show us where we've put people on pedestals, God. Show us the impact it has on them, the impact it has on us. Father, if anyone's put us on a pedestal right now, oh God, we make that choice to climb off that pedestal. We just, we just say no to the pride that comes with that. Lord, we want, to, we want to point or reflect the glory to you, God. Let it just let praise go where praises do. Let glory go where glories do. And Father, I pray right now for an infusion of strength, like what Paul and Barnabas had as they faced this crowd, as they watched it swing from one direction from the other, as Paul experienced going from being called a God and saying, no, 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 to being stoned and feeling those rocks hit and being dragged outside the city, so seriously injured that they thought he had died. Oh God, that's a hard one. But Lord, I pray for the strength and the courage to stand and Father, for the wisdom to see when culture is trying to pull us away from you. Lord, let us see that. Lord, let your word come to life for us that we could see, we could hear, we can understand and that that foundation is built on a rock. Man, Paul's foundation was rock solid here. It was rock. He knew, he and Barnabas knew and they would pay whatever price because they knew that you were worthy of it all. Father, help our belief system to get to the place where we know, where we've seen, where we've tasted, we've experienced, where we decree and declare, not just as religious verbiage, but with all of our being that you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Just say that right now. You are worthy of that all. You are worthy of it all, God. We just look to you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 
All right, thanks for joining me today. I've kept you a little long. So glad you stuck with me. Feel free to share this again. Put in the comment, when you share it, put in why somebody needs to watch it. Your friends, um, they're gonna, they're gonna, he, they're gonna that that carries weight it carries value so just share that be feel again feel free to share this we want we want to shore up the kingdom and we want those who don't know jesus to come know jesus because that's what they're searching for and so if you want more information on the ministry just go to ruthhendrickson.com and also if these um if these little messages are just encouraging you if you are growing from it if they have an impact we want to invite you to go ahead and sow into the ministry, donate into the ministry. You can go to RuthHendrickson.com. There's a donate button there, gifts of any amounts. So you know what? God uses them. He multiplies them. He's so good. And so we just want to invite you to do that. And of course, also when you go to the website, there's a whole lot of information on there, resources to help you as you grow in your walk with the Lord. Okay, that's it. Remember, you're here for such a time as this. Jump up, leap up from whatever is holding you back, leap up and know that if God is for us, who could be against us? He's got us and he is worthy of it all.